Hello out there, and taking a look today at a brand new release knife from Monterey Bay Knives, and what we have in front of us is the Sprocket, and there are two versions of the knife. Up front here we have uh, the all titanium version, and then uh, down below we have the carbon fiber. Both are titanium frame locks, and these are... Uh, a new release from, from MBK and a, a departure from what they've done so far. So if you're familiar with Monterey Bay, the, the models that they've put out up until now were all, at least to my understanding, all Ray Laconico designs. They had the Min Pin, which I did not really care for. <laughs> they had the Easy C, which I really did like a lot. And then the most recent one, I think, is like a, a slip joint sort of style or a non-locking. I wouldn't really call it necessarily a slip joint. Uh, but it's non-locking version of that Easy C that is getting a lot of really good and positive kind of attention. But then this Sprocket came out as well, and this one is not designed by Ray Laconico. This is designed by Jerry McGinnis, and the reason why that is relevant to me is that McGinnis has been one of my favorite designers for as long as I've known who he was. And I've eyed his designs and his really nice expensive stuff for forever, but it's just not something that I can afford to drop money on. And if we're looking at like budget kind of uh, Jerry McGinnis designs, the only ones that I'm aware of were from CRKT years and years ago, and those are all long discontinued. I happen to own a Premonition still. Um, well, now, because I, I bought one again, but I used to have the tuition, and I think there were two or three others that he did with CRKT. And now, really, if you want one of his designs, yeah, you have to pay like four or five hundred dollars for his pro line through you know, his own very company, you know. And I think the thing that really appeals to me and maybe some other people about this Monterey Bay uh, release here is that even though it's still an expensive knife in that it's $225, it is less than half the price of what you would pay for one of like the mid-tech designs, and it's still very good quality, and I think that is the big selling point for me when it comes to this design. That said, it's not going to be for everyone, so let's get into the details, talk about what I really like about it, some of the things that maybe could have been improved, and some of the things that, if you're not familiar with uh, the McGinnis kind of style, that uh, might be things that you'd need to know. So the one that I'm going to focus on for most of this video is the carbon fiber one because that's the one that just like appealed to me immediately when I first unboxed these two. And these are here on loan from MBK. So let me be very clear about this. These are not my knives. Um, I'm not getting paid or anything to do a review, but they sent them to a number of reviewers in our pass around group just to check out. So that's why I have both of them. I'm not keeping either of them, though I very much would like to. <laughs> but uh, but. The carbon fiber one is the one that has just been in my pocket because I like it significantly more than the titanium one. And that's really not a knock on the tie. It's just uh, the carbon fiber is just very attractive, which we'll get into in just a moment. But let's take a look at this uh, this overall length, do some size comparisons here uh, before we bring the other one back out. So what we have when you take a look at this cutting edge, we are just over three inches of cutting edge total, right around... Um, three and a quarter inches. So a pretty good solid size. Let me see what I can bring out that's on the table that will be a good comparison. We'll start with the mini grip. I don't have a lot of stuff actually handy right now. It's lining up the tips. So the sprocket is obviously a bit bigger than that. Here's a good one. The Manix 2. Actually, that's a really good one. Manix 2 is a much larger knife, I think, just in a number of dimensions, but overall length is pretty close to comparable, and uh, so is the cutting edge. What else do we have? Maybe a 943. Another pretty good size comparison there, almost exactly the same overall length. And then let's go with a bug out. All right, so that's enough for size comparisons. Hitting the weight, uh, the big thing to note with the weight here is that uh, there's gonna be a significant difference between the carbon fiber and the titanium. I don't know what that is because I haven't weighed them yet, but I can feel it just when I carry them. 3.4, 3.42 with the carbon fiber. I'm gonna guess 4.3. Dude, 
That's legit. <laughs> That's legit. I, I can't screw this video up now. This has to be the take that we use. <laughs> 4.29. All right. So, yeah, that's, couldn't do that again if I tried it a thousand times, so there we go. So 4.3 for the titanium version. So both of them, though, like, they're both very friendly when it comes to, to carrying them in hand. I think using, though, I think if, if you're going to use one of these for a significant amount of time, maybe the titanium one, it just does feel sturdier because it is, uh, does have that extra weight. It does feel like... Sorry, moving stuff out of the way. It does feel like something that um, does feel a little more durable. You know, that, that might be deceiving just because of the strength of carbon fiber despite how much it cuts weight. But, um, but yeah, just that, that general feel if you're going to use it as a, as a tool and as a, like a, you know, constantly cutting with it, maybe you would just want to lean towards using that titanium one. I'm not sure. It's going to be up to, to the person who makes the purchase obviously. Now let's get into some of the details though. Our blade. So the blade that we have here is M390. So the blade steel is a, a very good one. Uh, the most telling thing, the most um, significant thing about this blade though is the recurve. I have gone as a knife fan from really liking recurves to liking them a little bit less. It's not really my thing that much anymore. When I first got into knives, I liked them a whole lot because Ken Onion uh, was coming out with a lot of recurves and I loved Ken Onion, still do. So a lot of my knives had them. This one isn't too drastic, but I mean, it is significant. You can see that. The thing I do like about the design of recurves though is that when you have it in the right place and when it's done the right way, this little bit of like belly right here is just always really functional and it's it just looks good too and so as far as looks go uh, i do like it as far as resharpening goes i don't know how difficult it would really be i mean i i think that it's a i don't know it's not so drastic that you know you'll end up with dead spots or anything and i've been able to to touch up and, and resharpen recurves that were even more significant than this so not that big of a deal even though it isn't really my preference that much anymore but overall, it is a very good looking blade. Uh, the recurve look, like I said, isn't a bad one aesthetically. The stone wash on this knife and the, there might be some glare here, but the, the polish level is pretty good. I mean, this knife just has a bunch of different facets as you rotate it. So I, I do really like that. The name Sprocket isn't anywhere on the knife at all. The only billboarding that we have is the MBK logo right here on the flat. And then up top, you see the McGinnis name. So that's it. And I think, and if I'm remembering right, that's what the other models that they had sort of went with too. It said Laconico up top. And I think Laconico designs even with like Kaiser. I think they all sort of say that. That's been his thing is like the, I might be wrong there. But not a lot of billboarding. So that's the point. If you are not into billboarding, you might be in pretty good shape. And then as we move on back, we have a really good amount of jimping. Um, but that said, like the jimping is sort of hidden, a lot of it is, so it's not, you know, you're not going to be able to use <laughs> everything down there. But, I mean, it is also good, though, if you're, like, just to get a, a handle of where you are on the knife when it's closed, I guess, if you're just holding it a certain way. Maybe it's functional in that capacity, but when the knife is open, you know, you do have a good ramp, and it is... A good amount of jimping to get a good purchase so yeah I, I like what they did with it and we do have some more jimping on the flipper tab the flipper tab is nice and big and it doesn't seem bulky to me it doesn't seem to get in the way I'm not someone who really is nitpicky about that sort of thing though and I know other people are so maybe some other reviews will go more in depth about how this might not be a good thing or it might be a great thing but yeah, for, for me, it's perfectly fine, and I really like having the guard. The thing about flippers that I enjoy is when it gives you a good significant guard, and that's why I don't really do flipper deletes, because I just like that, that extra little bit of security, even if it's a subconscious thing to, to have that. All right, now moving on back, we'll get into ergos in a bit, and we'll talk a little bit more about this choil. But... All right, guys, so <laughs> I actually forgot to talk about ergonomics. Uh, and then I finished the video and I'm not doing it again because that was like almost 20 minutes and I would nailed the weight. So I want to keep that take, but let's just talk about them real quickly right here and then we'll move back to the rest of the video. So yeah, what you can see with that jimping, like I said before, it does just grip the thumb 
pretty darn well, even though a lot of it is like hidden down here. Um, you can get really good purchase. And all of these like speed holes, they just provide those points of contact that are super comfortable. And taking a look at it, maybe room for a larger hand too as well. If you do want to use this area here as a forward choil, I think you could, but it just seems a little bit sketchy. If it were a little bit deeper maybe, then you could definitely use it. Maybe extend it a little bit further. But yeah, not necessarily something, even though like I have it gripped very hard right here and I'm not cutting myself any kind of sliding or anything it just doesn't seem like that's what the knife is designed for you to do even though it would be something you could do for just some detail work very quickly but overall the ergos on the cf1 are really quite good the titanium scale here isn't slick so you're going to have the same like level of, of quality when it comes to the ergonomics and it might just be a machining thing or just um the one you get versus you know like one versus the other but the, the jimping quality on the CF version is a little bit better than on the titanium. So this one does grip my thumb a little bit better than this. It might just be the, the two blades that I got. Maybe you can even see. I mean, it just does look a little bit different, a little bit more pronounced on this one. But who knows? But regardless, even with that being the case, this one is still very good in the hand as well. Moving on back, I want to talk about the scales. And um, we'll bring in the other one as well. So the all tie, the titanium is the same on both knives. So if we look at the, the lock side, it's exactly the same. The, the finish is the same. I don't know if this is like completely, like if you can see the detail here. Um, I don't know if this is, I don't think it's like, it's not orange peel because it's not really texturing. I just think it's like the powder kind of coating, but it is very good looking and it does provide a little bit of traction, so this isn't a slick scale at all. Um, I do like the look of it. Uh, the other side, let's get with the titanium first. So they did a very good job with the machining, uh, especially around all these holes. Like the last thing that you would want is any kind of sharpness, and the chamfering is so slight. That face there is, is very small, but it just provides a, a perfect amount of, say, I don't want to necessarily, excuse me, necessarily say grip or traction really because it's not like a grippy thing, but it helps the thumb, like the thumb and the fingers can catch in this very well without it being sharp. So, I mean, it's done for ergonomic aid 100% um, and it's done to an extent that I think is exactly what you would be shooting for if you wanted to make something that's good looking, that also cuts weight and also could be in aid depending on how you're holding the knife so definitely kudos to them there um, the carbon fiber one is the same way and it's very like it's very subtle like you can't even really see where they did that unless you're looking close but the finishing on this carbon fiber scale is excellent just a good piece of carbon fiber, I think. It just looks good. Um, I'm not really always the fan of like the, uh, the super shiny kind of carbon fiber. I like stuff that's a little bit more matte. And if you're comparing it to the Rogue Blade Works bug out scale here, so this one is like a, a matte finish and it still has a little bit more slickness than this. This one um, on the sprocket is not gonna slide around on you at all. So, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of, of knives that have carbon fiber that's, like, grippier than this. And maybe, like, the peel ply from Spyderco on, like, the, the Para 3. That one definitely was. Or um, the best comparison, God, I, and maybe I'll put in a picture of it because I can't even remember the name. But it's that, like, really heavy Spyderco sprint that I had a while back. The carbon fiber on that that I just raved about um, was pretty similar to this. So, yeah, picture probably inserted here. <laughs> All right, and now let's continue to move on back because we are like really tearing up time right now. Um, <laughs> moving on back, let's take a look. We have two different backspacers depending on which one you choose. Um, the titanium one first. I think this is just a, uh, a tie backspacer as well. So nothing too special right there. But on the carbon fiber one, we have this like beautiful carbon fiber backspacer. And if you remember the min pin, that's what the min pin really had going for it. The backspacer on that knife 
was beautiful. And like that, that almost made me like, <laughs> I tried to like that knife so much and that backspacer really helped because it was exceptionally good looking. And this one is too. So yeah, as far as backspacers go, um, big wins there. And I do like the clip. The clip is maybe not going to be for everybody, but uh, for me, definitely works. It is tip down, or excuse me, tip up right side only. So we do have that. Uh, the lanyard hole is positioned, so it's not going to interfere with how deep the, the carry is. The carry is not particularly deep, but for me, I mean, I carried the knife all week long, didn't have any issues with it at all. So yeah, I can't really complain about that. When we're talking about a $225 knife though, we want action. We want action, we want lockup, we want the thing to function really well. Um, in my estimation, this is a well-built knife. Uh, much better built than the min pin was. Um, maybe, and uh, this is just memory, so I can't really remember that well, but I think maybe a little bit better than the Easy C as well. It just feels like a solid knife. Um, the lockup, let's take a look at how early the lockup is. Pretty darn early here. Pretty darn early here as well. Uh, we do have the stainless steel interface on that lock bar. And uh, it is like very flush. You can barely see that it's there. So uh, good job with that. The other thing, and you might be seeing just with the, the lock bars here, um, it's not difficult to disengage, but you do, it doesn't extend, like this side does not extend above the, the show side scale. So you do sort of have to push down to get to it, but it does disengage very easily. So like, I don't think that's an issue at all. One thing that I did notice on both of these knives is that they came slightly loose, like just very slightly loose. And that's almost to people's preferences. And I'm very preferential when it comes to, to how I want <laughs> my, my lockup and any movement to be. And it was just a quick like quarter turn uh, with the, See, and I, I slipped on it just a little bit right there. It's a quarter turn with the um, torque screw and I mean lockup is perfect. So yeah, I was able to adjust that and the action on it is still super smooth. What's funny is that this carbon fiber one has broken in very well since I got it because I've been opening it, using it, like doing all that stuff. And it's now about as smooth as the titanium one is. The titanium one was like that, just like out of the box. And it might be, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the, the cause of that is, why one knife is smoother out of box than the other, but, but they're both pretty darn good opening and closing now. As far as detent goes, we're not able to shake it out. We are, if we, if we hit the flipper, it's hard to not get it all the way. So once you break that detent, it seems like it's going to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to just like barely break the detent and do like a partial opening. And the knife just has a lot of get up and go, which I like. It's a very good thing. The detent closing. And it's always cool to just to be able to see that, like what's going on inside the knife through those speed holes. So, and, and actually, I think I'll like record this part right here and maybe put it earlier in the video for people to check out because yeah that is just a uh, a pretty neat thing and you can see the blade someone asked me a question about the blade being like exposed the edge of it and it's not I mean you can see inside the knife that I mean even going like this I can't cut myself like it's there's no exposure there and the tip I mean right here nothing so seems to be perfectly safe. It's a good knife, guys. It's a knife that, yes, it's expensive. It's it's $225, so this isn't like for someone who's working on a budget, but if you are someone probably like myself, but just with $225 lying around, if you're someone like myself who's just a huge fan of McGinnis and you like his designs and you want something high quality and you don't want to, you know, have to resign yourself to the uh the premonition which is right here, you know, or, you know, some of the other like cheaper budget stuff that's out there from the past, then here's your option. And that's why I think this is an excellent and, and smart move from McGinnis and Monterey Bay Knives is to get this excellent designer's work out at a high quality and at a price where it's never really been this affordable before. So if you think about other things in the $225 price point, 
you know, some of the things from Spyderco and Benchmade and the knives that they're coming out with, I think that, you know, this is definitely competitive. Think about the, the Ace, uh, the Ace series from, like, Ace Biblios from um, Giant Mouse and think about the price point of those and the steel, it's competitive depending on what you're looking for. I think this is right up there with the, the market value. And with this design and the way it's executed, I think there's definitely some value here. So really, really thankful to MBK for letting me check these out. This one is going on the list. Hopefully I can get it sooner rather than later, but you never know. Uh, maybe it'll never happen, but it's, uh, it's definitely worth chasing down in the future. Any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions about it, let me know down below, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.